everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Kim and today I'm bringing you my September wrap-up of all of the books that I managed to read this month I really was thinking I was having a hard month um, of reading because I really only have time to read on the weekends because during the week I'm exhausted when I get home from work but I did manage to read quite a few um, I attempted 15 books which when I added it up is like whoa um, but I managed to read 10 of the 15. Five of them I did end up DNFing this month because they just did not hold my attention. And I do need to do that, uh, that video, um, DNF video as well. Um, but that will be in another, another video. So I'll, I won't talk about the five I DNFed. Um, we'll save that for another time. So I'm just going to go down my list. Um, some will be uh, physical copies, a lot of them will be audio or e-copy books. And if my voice sounds really strange, because it does to me, I have a sinus cold. Um, it came on this last week about Thursday. So yeah, <coughs> it's going to be a fun video. So I do apologize if my voice sounds a little rough and more so than normal. That's the reason. All right. So most of my books were from a 3 to a 5, actually strike that, I did have one 2 star rating book, um, but the rest were majority 3 and 4 stars with I think only one this month which was a 5 star. Okay, so the first book that I read, this was for my Romanceopoly, this is Naughty Nights by Laura Lee. Uh, you follow James, um, Dog, McKay. Um, and Krista Jensen and how they um, come together again. They were basically um, friends to enemies and back to from enemies to lovers uh, type of story. Um, it was really good. Uh, he is comes across as very kind of ruthless in what he wants in a playboy type of way. Uh, but it, it was a very entertaining read. It went by way faster than I thought it would. Um, and it was only my second reread of this book, but it was really good. I really did enjoy it. Like I said, I gave it a four star rating. Um, if you haven't ever picked up a Laura Lee book, this would be a good series. I think there are three or four other books um, to the series. So that was a really good book <coughs> to start this month off with for my run at Sopoli. I believe um, this is also for a previous um, Romance Opoly pick. This is Amanda Scott, Border Fire. I started this as a physical book, but I was just dragging through it, so I found that I had it on Audible, so I, I finished it out that way. So it's kind of a both physical and audio reading of this book. Uh, it was good, not as good as I remembered it being. I think this actually might not have been for Romance Opoly. I can't remember. It may have been giving it another shot because I have a set of books that I'm trying to determine do I want to keep them or not and this may have been from that uh, set of books. But uh, you follow um, Rabbi Redcloak who is Quentin Scott on um, his real name, his raider, his border raider name is Rabbi Redcloak and um, you follow his story and Janet Grahams who actually releases him from her brother who caught him while um, raiding the English side of the border and all of their trials and trying to come together and not start a war and all of those things. So it was a really good book overall. I enjoyed it. Again, not as much as I did before, so I gave it a three star rating. And I'm still on the fence of whether I want to keep it or not because um, I have gotten out of my historical romance. But I know I might end up regretting giving it up later so I'm still on the fence. I did read it but maybe now that I have it on Audible maybe I don't need to keep the physical. So that might be my solution. Alright, the next book that I have, this is from my bookcase club. It's a fantasy book. This is Dreaming Death by J. Kathleen Shinney. Uh, it's, it was actually much, much more interesting than I thought it was going to be. Um, this is following Sharon Enger's um, journey. She is blind and uh, she is connected through the kind of magic system that's in this world um, through dreams to uh, Michael Lee who kind of, I don't sound very knowledgeable, it's been a while since I read it. It was earlier this month. Um, he is part of the royal family. 
um, helping to um, solve um, mysteries and kind of rule and enforce laws and that type of thing. So he's dreaming of all these deaths and his dreams are so vivid that it affects all the other sensitives in them. So he's kind of looked down upon because of that because he can't control what he's dreaming and it's affecting others and she can actually help him because um, she is sharing his dreams with him. So they're trying to find this killer that has invaded their city and doing all these horrible things and through them working together can they solve it and can they find it before it's too late. So I really enjoyed it. It's kind of set in like Portugal or in that Middle Eastern style or area. Um, so it was really interesting to see their um, culture and their belief systems. It was pretty cool. So I did enjoy it and uh, if you saw my unboxing of my last uh, bookcase club, I got another book and you'll see that in my October TBR that I really enjoyed it so much that I was actually super excited to get another book by that same author. So I ended up giving this a four star rating. It wasn't the best uh, fantasy book I've ever read, but it was still up there enough that I wanted to read more about the author. <coughs> yeah. So that is my um, rating of this one. Um, leave me comments down below if there's any of these books that I'm mentioning that you would like for me to do a independent review on. I still have a stack of books from months ago that I still need to review and I can add that to my uh, pile and I still need to make an Instagram photo of all the books that I need to make a review video on. <clears throat> so that's coming soon as well if you want to follow me on Instagram. It is uh, Passion for Books 79 there as well. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's the same handle, Passion for Books 79 there as well. All right. And on Twitter, I do more updates of where I'm at in all my books. So that'll be a good way of keeping up with where I'm at with all my books that I'm reading. All right. <coughs> all right. So the next book, I will put a picture up on the screen for you guys. It is Dragon's Lair. Um, Audible has a new program where if you're already a member of it, you get um, books that you can listen to for free. So I downloaded a, uh, it's called Dragon's Lair. I cannot remember. I'll have to look up on my phone. You're following two people. One person happens to be a VP of a motorcycle club and the girl ends up pregnant with his child after her ex-boyfriend cheated on her. She left him and is kind of on a rebound and they end up getting together and trying to uh, work out how they're going to live together um, with him being part of the motorcycle club and her trying to learn her way fitting in and all of that. So it was really good. I really enjoyed it. <coughs> and the author is uh, Chantal um, Fernando. Ay, ay, ay. And then of course it has to be in another language for this one. Um, it was Faye is the girl's name and Dexter is the VP. But he goes by Sin is his motorcycle name. But I would read you what it was about, but in, on um, Goodreads it's in a different language. So I apologize for that. <clears throat> that I did not understand or know at the time. But it was still a great read, um, or a good read. I gave it a three star. I wouldn't mind reading more of that series um, at a later date. Um, it's a little bit more, I guess, realistic in some MC books I've read. It has been more of a lighter feel to it. This kind of felt more real um, with that end of thing. So I did give it a three star rating. Again, it wasn't the best, but it was definitely not the worst. So it was kind of the middle of the road uh, for me. The next book I got, and I'll put a picture up above. This is The Prophecy. This was for my Romanceopoly for a historical book uh, to read. And it is from a new a program that I've been testing out for the last month or so, and I'll need to do a separate video on it as well. It's called VoraciousReadersOnly.com. You go there, you sign up, it's completely free. Um, and you, ch you choose whatever broad genres that interest you off the list that they provide you. Then they send you emails of um, different authors for books for you to read for free um, to do reviews on. And once they start coming, you get a lot of book recommendations. 
You get to choose which ones interest you the most. Again, they're very broad, overall, arcing um, types of books, genres. And then they'll send you more specific one. It could be urban fantasy, it could be fantasy, it could be historical fantasy. And on those slides, so you have historical romance, then paranormal romance, and thrillers, and different types within that same genre. You get my meaning. So I have the prophecy. I ended up giving it a three star rating. Let's see. So you follow Gwen and what was his name? Um, Graylin. So Gwen, this is a time travel type of book. So you follow Gwen and she goes back in time to Graylin's time in Scotland. And in a way, I've read time travel books before and with this particular one, it didn't feel as authentic as I probably would want it to, whereas a lot of times in the past ones that I've read that seem to be more well done than this one, that because she's from the future, a lot of the things that she would have brought, you'd think they would have been more uh, wary and um, leery of her technology and the way she um, addresses herself um, to different people. So that part didn't feel as authentic, but again, it comes from the prophecy, so they were more prepared for her from coming from the future to the past. So that may be kind of that end of things. Um, I did give it a three star rating. So again, a middle of the road book. Parts of it really drew me in, and then other parts seemed to just drag and be kind of more repetitive. So that is um, where I ended up with that book. It, overall, it was a decent read. Again, it's not the best book I've ever read, and that was by uh, Kim Sakwa, S-A-K-W-A. Again, I'll have all these books listed down below with their authors if you're curious or wanting to pick any of these up. Um, so overall, not a bad. Again, I've gotten away from historical romance, and that may be why I'm a little bit more critical of it. Um, but like I said, it was a decent read. It was a cute, sweet type of romance, so not too bad. Um, the next book, I believe this came from NetGalley. It is Brimstone Bound. And this is uh, a paranormal book where she is trying to become a detective and she ends, you know, it has werewolves and vampires and other um, mythological um, entities as well living in London, England in that area. So it is a England bound book, not American. Um, so you follow Emma as she's going through her last kind of practicum more or less to become a fully fledged de detective and she's put into the supernatural squad and she ends up finding out she herself seems to have a, an ability that she didn't know about until she ended up in this particular squad trying to solve the murder of her mentor. Um, so it follows through that. It was pretty, like I said, a decent read. I ended up giving it, actually it's not a decent read, it was a great read. Uh, this. This is going to be a fun video to edit. I am all over the place. Um, it was a good read. I really did enjoy it. It drew me in. I wanted to keep picking up the book. I did give it a five star rating overall. It was a great feel to it. It drew me into the story, especially over in England in a different um, area. I enjoyed all the different descriptions of the scenery and all of that and just learning more culturally things as well through through the writing of the author. So I really did enjoy it. I would like to read the next book, <coughs> but it hasn't come out yet. So hopefully it'll come on that galley and hopefully I'll be able to review it. So that would be an awesome thing to happen. Okay, the next book, this was my buddy read for September. This is the third book in um, the Red Queen series. This is King's Cage. You continue to follow Mare's journey through everything that's going on. She ends up back as a captive of Maven and how cruel he is to her and his obsessive jealousy to win over his brother who is in exile. So I gave it a four star rating. Pretty much all the books, I can't remember if I gave the first book a three star rating. I'll have to go back and double check that when I do a review on it. And I want to do all of the reviews for this series so that's coming up. I know that's one individual book I will review <coughs> independently. 
So the four star rating overall, it is more of a middle to high school um, YA type book. Um, there is a lot more violence in this series. So it leans more towards kind of eighth to high school age, I would think. Possibly seventh grade, depending on the maturity of the kid um, series. So it's not an adult fantasy type book. So a lot of my, the people who started reading it with me in my buddy group, they were knocking it for a lot of things. And I just kept telling you, you've got to take into account who the audience of this is and why it would be as repetitive on some of the themes uh, overarching all of the books um, in general. Um, overall, I have enjoyed this journey. They get better with each book. Um, I have found, at least in my opinion, I know I'm not the, you know, the end-all be-all uh, critiquer of these books, but my opinion, I'd say it's a four-star rating. Again, it's not the best, like the, the series by Sarah J. Mass. I love the Throne of Glass series. They definitely trump this series, but it's still a good read. I would recommend it. The next book, Again, I'll put a picture up. I think I'll put pictures up for the rest of the last remaining three books. Um, Enter at Your Own Risk was another romance Opley book. Um, this follows. So again, you are following Kendra and Wade. So Kendra, she is trying to get her license to be a lawyer. She failed the first time around, so she's still studying to become a lawyer and to take the writing portion of it again. And so she's doing pro bono work, and here is Wade, who actually comes from an extremely wealthy family, but the father, <coughs> excuse me, but the father in his uh, will, final will, when he passed, uh, kept the his Wade's uh, portion of his inheritance until he made a stipulation until he either married or turned 30, I believe. So Wade finds himself needing a lawyer because this woman confronted him at one of his uh, concerts at a bar that he plays at. He is a struggling uh, musician. Uh, he doesn't want to ask for money from his brothers who again are wealthy. They already came into their inheritance. He wants to make it on his own. This is something he loves doing, playing and writing his own songs and all of these different bars. Um, and so this woman, she approaches him at one night at one of the clubs he's playing at and says, you know, you, you don't remember me. This is your baby. Here is a letter you're going to get from my lawyer. So he goes and finds um, a pro bono uh, lawyer because he can't afford a real lawyer. And it ends up being someone that he got into a confrontation with in the bar that same night. And they just clashed from the from the start. So this is kind of an enemies to lovers, and with a little bit of uh, kind of work related type of things all tied in together. I hope I'm making some sort of sense for you guys because I think I'm struggling a little bit, but we're gonna struggle through. We only have two more books to go. This is sounding great. So at least it's gonna be entertaining for you guys. All right, so I did give Enter at Your Own Risk a four star. It was entertaining. I really did feel for both of these characters and enjoyed their coming together and seeing their romance sprout. So it was a really good, really entertaining story to read. So four star rating. The next book, this was for kind of a horror, thriller, killer type of book for my romanceopoly. I know that sounds twisted, but that's part of the board game to find kind of a serial killer type of story. So I chose, again, it <clears throat> from Voracious Readers Only, is The House of Twelve, and I put a picture up here. This book reminds me kind of a Saw-esque type of story. Uh, it had those vibes to it, and though it's not as intricate or as gruesome as the Saw uh, films, it still had that kind of feel where this where these groups of people, 12 people, are shoved into this home and all the windows and doors are all boarded up and they have to kill one person between the hours of 11 and 12 and midnight. So, they're only one person within that time frame um, or they all die. Um, if they refuse to do it, then they all die as well. So, you're Following him through all of this and towards the end, I did give it a three-star rating. It was kind of predictable who was going to go when, and I picked up early on of kind of who was kind of figuring it all out, 
and I wasn't really as surprised about the ending. Um, that was kind of very predictable towards the end of what was going to happen. So I did give it a three star rating. Overall, enjoyed it, didn't hate it, um, didn't mind picking it up to read it or anything like that. And it was a fairly fast read when I did um, finally pick it up and go with it. Um, again, mainly on the weekends when I read this book. So overall, okay book. And then the very, very last book, book number 10 that I have read or listened to in this case, this was an Audible, another Audible free book that I got to listen to it is a, a fantasy style book. It is A Demon in Silver. Honestly, this book was very difficult for me to follow along with and I've gotten into quite a bit of fantasy. It wasn't so much that, that it was a fantasy book and it wasn't the fact there were a lot of characters. Um, to keep up with. You had Silver, then a person who uh, found her and saved her is Gavin and his two sons. Then you had Leah, or Livia, I think it, Livia is her name. Then you had Justin, um, and another, his pal that you know, went with him to fight in the wars and stuff. It was so, it was just disjointed. This one I gave a two star rating. It was a very disjointed book. Because you would follow one character and then it would flash back to these gods and it would talk to you about these gods. Then it would flash over to this different set of characters and you didn't really know anything about what happened to the previous characters. And then after this scene is done for several chapters then you get another uh, description about these other sets of gods. It was just constantly like that and towards the end you kind of see how they all fit together. But it was so disjointed and so difficult to follow and really have a desire to know anything and really wanting, rooting for really anybody um, in this story. <coughs> because you really didn't have a main character. I guess Justin could be considered the main character, even though it talks about the title is A Demon in Silver, which is one of your characters, but she's not the main focus of the, of the book. It was really bizarre book. Um, so I will probably not read any more or listen to any more unless I am really desperate um, and not have anything else to read. It just, and it was by S.E. Ford, I think is who the author is of this book. I don't think I told you the House of Twelves author. I can go back. Again, I'll have that listed down below. Um, who was the author of that? Uh, yes, R.S. Sorry, R. Ford is who the author of A Demon in Silver is. And I was looking at the other reviews and there weren't that many on Goodreads and they were like four to five stars. It's like, how? What did you guys hear or read differently than I did? So again, that's my personal opinion. It just wasn't a flowing book. It, like the plot was so disjointed and it was just all over the place. And it's not a format that I particularly love. If you like something that jumps around a lot, this might be for you. But Again, it was very graphic and I can kind of see where some people talked about fantasy, especially adult fantasy, being a little bit more graphic. He uses a lot of curse words and a lot of um, sexual innuendos and a lot of sexual contact and other things of that nature. And not a lot, but it is in there um, and all of that type of thing. The way women are kind of viewed as lesser than and those types of things. So, again, that was kind of a turn off, but it wasn't prevalent through it all. You know, you did have Silver, who was a very strong individual, very strong female character. So they are there. But overall, it was just not a good book for me. But you might enjoy it. I'm not going to tell you not to read it. I'm not going to tell you not to read any of these books. Um, but if you've read any of these and have any thoughts and opinions, let me know down below. But these are the 10 books that I did read, and I'm still thrown that I've read that many. But again, it's almost an equal balance of you know, physical books, audiobooks, and also e-copy books. So, again, leave me your thoughts and comments down below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this September wrap-up. And until my next video, I hope you have a good one. Bye!